So I've been playing Shovel Knight. The NES. Nostalgia. Hype. These are the three ingredients chosen to create Shovel Knight. <laughs> In the city of Townsville. Though not really, but I went with the Powerpuff Girls theme here, so I'm kind of stuck with it now. There lives a knight with a shovel called Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight used to be like this awesome dude together with his damsel Shield Knight. Who looks fucking badass, by the way. But then one day he like wakes up and she's gone, so like, yeah. And because of that, he went full hermit for a few years, and so evil has taken over the land because he wasn't around to protect it. So now it is up to you to get Grandpa Shovel Knight out of the retirement home and get him some Prozac. And also maybe save the world a bit. Now, in NES games, the stories, more often than not, <laughs> weren't very good. Even series like Final Fantasy or Metal Gear that are known for their storytelling started off with the nothing but premise approach. So, <laughs> it wouldn't be very unfair to assume that Shovel Knight's story would have been much the same. I mean, it does start off like a callback to those types of games with its short little plot dump, but then emotions happen. You see, this game uses its gameplay over things like cutscenes when it comes to storytelling. SK having to deal with the losings of the Shield Knights, for instance, becomes playable through dream sequences in between stages. This, paired with the rather incredible fucking music, makes for a simple yet oddly emotionally charged motivation. Really? <laughs> I shouldn't understate how engrossing this story actually is, as it might have almost made me tear up near the end. Fucking bleepin' and bloopin' ass graphics and dialogue that rarely ever lasts more than a single paragraph somehow made a story happen that tugged at my heartstrings quite a great deal. And that, as they say, is pretty fucking cool. Much like its story, Shovel Knight very much builds upon the NES foundations to create literal sex fuck. It is a 2D platformer, sure, where you do all the usual things like the overworld, the occasional townage, the mandatory end of stage boss fight, and there are definitely many others like it, but this one's Yacht Clubs. And Yacht Club does not fuck around. Thing is, is that while the story creates a good motivation, the game probably would have been totally fine with just the gameplay as well, as the game feel has to be the gamingest feel I have ever game feeled. Like, if there's one thing Shovel Knight definitely didn't take from ye oldy NES platformers, it's the sometimes rather stiff controls caused by either not quite as fine-tuned programming or because of the NES controller being a bit brickish. Not to say that any of those games are at all bad or anything. Hell, Castlevania even built itself around that entirely. Konami likes it stiff. But my boy, SK, has to be one of the most elegant and aerodynamic fully armored knights out there. He uses his shovel to thrust downwards from mid-air, only to then be able to bounce around on it like a pogo stick. And of course, he can use it to dig up treasure and hit shit with it. But that bouncing creates this really cool dynamic style of platforming and way of dealing with enemies. Like... I've never not felt as if I wasn't able to calculate exactly where I would land or how far my momentum could take me. Which makes landing consecutive bounces pretty fucking satisfying because of how involved you actually are. And don't even get me started on the picking up of the gun. So yeah, <laughs> the base game is the most rock solid foundation a game like this could ever have. And quite often when a game feels very fucking good to control, sucking at it can cause an unnecessary amount of frustration. Kinda like you're addicted to it and you need your fix, but the difficulty is getting in your way. But luckily, this game doesn't do none of that. 
While shit is definitely a bit rough, it never felt as if I was up against unfair odds. There isn't any of that washed out, trite NES style bullshit going on like constant respawning or unfair checkpoints or mini bosses out of nowhere. This game could have easily been a nostalgia driven clusterfuck of dated ideas. But instead, they only took the best bits and somehow made them even better by focusing the game's level design, enemies and bosses around this constant ebb and flow of risk and reward, easily making this one of the most enjoyable platformers I have ever played. You see, dying means losing the treasure what you collected and getting set back to a checkpoint. And you kinda need that treasure to be able to buy potions and upgrades. Good for you then, that it doesn't disappear or anything like that, as it just kinda <laughs> ends up floating around your death point, thus making it so that you'll likely be very motivated to jump right back in and do a corpse run to get your shit back. And during said corpse run, you get a little better every time. There are some levels where I died a lot, but by the time I reached the end I felt like I could have speed ran the entire fucking stage. Whether or not that's actually true, I never bothered to find out, but it's still a pretty great fucking feeling to not only get good, but to also get rewarded for it by the game giving your shit back. It's fucking great, mate. Something that is also fucking great, mate, are the game's many bosses. Like, because of the combat being based around this downwards thrust, it could easily end up being this almost Dark Soulsian parrying and dodging tense as dicks shovel fight once pitted up against someone that fights with the same type of restrictions. And most of the game's general enemies play into this very, very well, making dealing with them also quite tense and fun. But the bosses though are pretty fucking nuts. They're fast, hard but not too hard and above all quite varied. All of them are based solely around the player's wits and cunning and ability to use SK's moves to their fullest potential. And again, they really aren't that tough either. They often only take 3 or 4 tries at most, but it's just the fast paced action and the music accompanying it that makes these bosses hype as fuck. And much of what I said just now also goes for the game's levels, as each stage is completely different not just thematically, but also when it comes to enemy attack patterns and mechanics as well. All of which are based around the idea that all you can do is dig, jump and lunge down. There's shit you can bounce off of, the shit that breaks instantly upon shovelage, shit that shoots projectiles and certain shits that can influence a stage like slime that turns lava into green bouncy goo. It's really fucking neat and quite intuitive all the way. <sighs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie about this lads, despite all of the praise it's gotten from plenty of people whose opinions I value highly, I never actually felt the need to play it, which is why I'm as late to the party as I am now. It's like, I don't know, I'm a bit of a stubborn mule and when something just doesn't appeal to me, even slightly from an initial aesthetical point of view, then I likely just won't care. Not that I ever doubted the game's quality, but 8-bit graphics just aren't my thing. But then, a prehistoric mating call was heard from afar, and as the heavens split open, he appeared. Check it out, I got you a little bit of shovel man. And after I played for a bit, not even having considered reviewing it all that much, I was fucking blown away by how much I enjoyed it. It more or less transcends its NES trappings, completely escaping any of all semblance of nostalgia baiting. Things like the level design for instance, where it will introduce every mechanic or obstacle on its own and then proceeds to expand on it as the game goes on. It's shit like that that gives the game a great sense of progression, as it really did feel like I was slowly becoming some type of MLG demigod. 
not too many games do this, especially these days, and barely any games do this as well as Shovel Knight does. The game basically teaches you all the ropes in a very subdued and intuitive manner, only for it to then accumulate into the ultimate test of skill near the end. It was by far one of the hardest things I've ever done in a game, if not the, but holy shit did it not bother me at all. So yeah, the game plays and looks great. Like, for real, sometimes I was just waiting for a platform to platform, when all of a sudden, whoa. And the soundtrack is pretty fucking banging. Some of it's a bit generic, and I will admit that I'm not too big on chiptune, but holy shit is the music ever fitting. So much so in fact that it legit adds to the overall game feel. Like the bosses or dying and starting over again are all drenched in this I can not do it vibe and it's fucking great mate 8 out of 8 I rate this gate bait masturbate fate late hate instigate. Also, I did record a little thing about Plague of Shadows still, or at least I <laughs> I think that's what it's called, the DLC thing to Shovel Knight, but it kind of dragged the video on to well over 15 minutes and, I, and, I, and I, oh, I just didn't want that. But if you want me to put that together into a little thing and upload it to my second channel, let me know, I guess, then I will do that. And if not, then it will never see the light of day. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, goodbye. Thank you for watching.